This video is about careers in psychology. You might be considering studying psychology at the bachelor's level because you're interested in becoming a professional psychologist. Now the term psychologist is a protected term for those in the practice and it's recognized by the British Psychological Society across a number of specialized psychological areas and they include clinical psychology, counseling psychology, educational psychology, forensic psychology, health psychology, neuropsychology, occupational psychology, and sports and exercise psychology. Now about one-fifth or 20% of the students who complete a Bachelor's of Science in psychology will go on to become a professionally practicing psychologist. Part of the reason for this is that it is quite intensive to go on and do both the undergraduate and the postgraduate qualifications. Um, it's also fairly competitive across a number of these different psychology professions, but it's also because psychology graduates are quite valuable employees across a range of different industries. And that's because the core skills that psychologists learn throughout their studies are valuable across many different disciplines, particularly the ability to effectively communicate both in written and oral form make psychology graduates uh, a real asset to industries across the board from human resources to IT to advertising and of course in many different psychological settings outside of professional practice, for example, teaching, research, laboratory texts, and many, many other opportunities. So how do you choose an undergraduate degree in psychology? Well, the first question to ask yourself is whether or not you think you might want to become a professionally practicing psychologist. Now, if you do, you must complete an undergraduate degree that is accredited by the British Psychological Society. Now, our Birkbeck program is, but not all undergraduate psychology degrees are accredited, so it's very important that you check. Now, if you're not sure if you want to become a professionally practicing psychologist, then it's always best to go for an accredited program because you're not closing any doors. However, if you're absolutely sure that you do not want to become a professionally practicing psychologist, then you don't need to take an, an accredited undergraduate degree course. Regardless of which undergraduate degree you choose in psychology, it's absolutely imperative that you gain some work experience along the way. These can be volunteer positions, internships, or work experience, but it's incredibly important to try and taste test different areas of psychology to find out what you like and what you don't like. Sometimes it's just as important to find out what doesn't suit you as to what does suit you. Moreover, if you're planning to do a postgraduate qualification in psychology, having a bit of work experience um, in a psychological setting during your undergraduate degree can increase the competitiveness of your application. Now I'm going to tell you about the professional areas of psychology and the qualifications required to become a professionally practicing psychologist. First of all, you need to complete an undergraduate degree that is accredited by the British Psychological Society. That will give you your graduate basis for a chartered membership with the British Psychological Society. After that, you have to go on to complete the required postgraduate qualification. And that might be different for each of the different psychological professions. Now you gain your graduate basis for chartership by completing an accredited undergraduate degree, but you must achieve a 2-2 degree classification or better for your accreditation to be valid. So now I'm going to talk about the different professional psychology areas each in turn. They're all very varied and they all require different postgraduate qualifications. So let's start with clinical psychology. Clinical psychologists aim to reduce the psychological distress and enhance psychological well-being of people. Uh, they deal with children and adults. 
and they deal with mental and physical health problems. So this might include anxiety, depression, they might cover relationship problems, addictions, um, and also brain injury. Now to become a qualified uh, clinical psychologist, you must first gain your graduate basis for chartership and then also complete a three-year accredited doctorate in clinical psychology. And prior to the clinical doctorate, most clinical trainees are going to undertake um, a significant amount of work experience. Let's move on to counseling psychology. This professional area of psychology aims to work with both children and adults to examine mental health issues and also explore underlying problems that may have caused them. So maybe bereavement, uh, past or present relationships, um, mental health issues and disorders. And the qualifications required to become a counseling psychologist are also a graduate basis for chartership and three years in an accredited doctorate for counseling psychology or the society's qualification in counseling psychology. You can always find out more about the postgraduate qualifications also on the British Psychological Society web pages. It's important to check out the BPS's website because from time to time these different qualifications will be updated. So the next area I'm going to talk about is educational psychology. Educational psychologists are concerned with helping children and young people experiencing problems that might hinder them from learning. So basically they're trying to remove obstacles that are in the way of children receiving beneficial education. As an educational psychologist, you'll work directly with parents and teachers and local authorities. Qualifications required to become an educational psychologist currently require a graduate basis for chartership and three years in an accredited doctorate for educational psychology. The next professional area of psychology that I'm going to tell you about is forensic psychology. Now forensic psychologists deal with the psychological aspects of legal processes, including applying theory to criminal investigations and understanding psychological problems associated with criminal behavior and the treatment of criminals. Qualifications required are again, your graduate basis for chartership. Currently, it's an accredited master's in forensic psychology, but I'm quite certain that over the coming years, this will also transfer into a three-year doctorate program, but currently it's a master's in forensic psychology. And stage two of the society's qualification for forensic psychology. So now I'll tell you about sports and exercise psychology. This area of professional psychology is primarily concerned with the application of psychology to increase exercise participation and motivation in the general public. You might also find that sports and exercise psychologists are heavily involved in professional sport. The qualifications required to become a sports and exercise psychologist is a graduate basis for chartership, an accredited master's in sports and exercise psychology, and again, just as I suggested for forensics, in the coming years we do expect these to also be upgraded to doctorates in these areas. And stage two of the society's qualification in sports and exercise psychology. Now I'm going to tell you about health psychology. Health psychologists promote changes in people's attitudes, behaviors, and thinking about health and illness. They help people to cope with illness and the unpleasant medical treatments that accompany illness. They also deal with topics such as stopping smoking, skin care in the sun, and promoting safe sex to promote good health and prevent illness. The qualifications required for health psychology are graduate basis for chartership, an accredited master's in health psychology and stage two of the society's qualification in health psychology or a doctorate in health psychology. Following on, I'm going to tell you about occupational psychology. Occupational psychologists help organizations get the best from its workforce and improve job satisfaction of employees. This can involve topics such as how to motivate staff, recruit the best people for the job, help individuals gain new skills, plan careers, or cope with redundancy. 
The qualifications require graduate basis for chartership, an accredited master's in occupational psychology, and stage two of the society's qualification in occupational psychology. Now finally, I'm going to tell you about neuropsychology, which is the newest professionally recognized area of psychology. And neuropsychology looks at the relationship between the brain and its neuropsychological function, dealing with topics such as vision, memory, and smell. And neuropsychologists also help with the assessment and rehabilitation of people with brain injury or disease, such as strokes, dementia, tumors, and degenerative brain disorders. Now, neuropsychology is actually a specialization within clinical psychology. So to become a neuropsychologist, you actually still need to go on and do your graduate basis for chartership and then chartered status in a clinical or educational psychology doctorate or the BPS's qualification in clinical neuropsychology. So that is a whistle-stop tour of the professionally recognized areas of psychology by the British Psychological Society. But as I intimated early on in this talk, psychology graduates are very employable and highly regarded across industries. A psychology degree will develop your literacy, your numeracy, and your critical thinking skills. And psychology graduates are very employable.